rights activists and leaders from various religious groups organized a march on Wednesday to call for an immediate ceasefire in the conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre. Some of the hundreds of people who participated in the street march carried placards and banners condemning the conflict in Gaza and appealed for peace to return to the enclave. This is the first time religious leaders in Malawi have marched against a conflict happening nearly 5,000 kilometers away from home. Shaib Abdurrahman Ajas is the chairperson for the Forum for Democracy and Rights Defenders which organized the march. He says we could not have just sat down here in Malawi and watched what is happening in Gaza while other countries across the world are speaking against the conflict. He says that's why we here in Malawi said no, enough is enough and we too should stand up and speak against what is happening in Gaza. I just said the concern is the killing of innocent people. Palestinian authorities in Gaza says more than 11,000 people, about 40% of them children, have been killed since Israel launched a major air and ground offensive in response to the October 7 attack by Hamas on southern Israel that left 1,200 people dead. About 240 people were kidnapped and are currently being hostage by Hamas in Gaza. The Israel military said Wednesday that its troops raided Gaza's Shifa hospital, a complex of buildings where thousands of people have sheltered. Israel has accused Hamas, which controls Gaza, of using the hospital and its patients as human shields for command centers and safe houses. But Hamas and hospital officials deny the accusations. Bishop Joshua Jere is the president of the pastors, peacemakers, fraternal, a grouping of Christian religious leaders in Malawi. We see a lot of children are suffering, a lot of women are suffering. So as a human being, I can be happy if soldiers, they can shoot soldier to soldier, than to kill children or women or innocent people. So it's my prayer. I believe in this. Share Muslim Abbas Vinjenje is the Secretary General for the Ulama Council of Malawi, a group of Muslim scholars. He said what is happening in Gaza is tantamount to war crimes. Our main expectation is for ceasefire in Gaza and that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, should be taken to uh, International Criminal Court to be investigated for war crimes and genocide, which him and his army commanders have conducted to the people of Gaza. The top UN human rights official said last week the atrocities that Hamas fighters committed in Israel on October 7 also amounted to war crimes. Ajas, who organized the Wednesday's march in Blanta, said the Forum for Democracy and Rights Defenders will organize another march in the capital Lilongwe in two weeks' time should the conflict and killing of innocent people continue. Lamek Masina for VOA News, Blanta, Malawi. The families of the nearly 240 hostages Hamas is believed to be holding in Gaza have begun a five-day march from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They say they want the government to do more to win the freedom of their loved ones. Linda Gristin reports from Tel Aviv. It has been weeks of agony for the families of the hostages, weeks with no news about whether their loved ones are alive. Now they are marching to Jerusalem. Yuval Aran survived the massacre at Kibbutz Be'eri, but seven members of his family, including three children, were taken hostage by Hamas. I always worry. I'm always in pain, and I can't sit at home anymore. I have to do something, and this march is what I am going to do with all the families of the hostages and this entire country. Shaul Levy's granddaughter, Naama, was seen being kidnapped in one of the first videos posted by Hamas on social media networks. Levy says he is marching to deliver a message to the government. We start here in this museum, Tel Aviv, walking to Jerusalem, hoping to meet the government, hoping the prime minister to emphasize that there is no any alternative, only to bring them all 
back home. The Hostage and Missing Families Forum Advocacy Group has demanded urgent attention be paid to the needs of more than 30 children taken hostage without their parents. They believe that one woman may even have given birth in captivity. I am demanding from Benjamin Netanyahu and from all the cabinet to give us answers and deeds. We have no strength anymore. Bring back our children and bring our families home. Israel believes that Hamas and Islamic Jihad are holding hostages in tunnels below buildings in Gaza, including hospitals, accusations Hamas and hospital officials deny. Israel's army spokesman shows a tunnel leading to what he says is a maze of underground rooms below the Rantisi Children's Hospital in northern Gaza. You're now entering into the room where we suspect the hostages were being held. I want you to look at this room. People are putting curtains with nothing above, just wall. No reason to put here a curtain, unless you want to film hostages and deliver movies. The U.S.-designated terrorist groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad have posted videos on their social media channels of hostages making statements which Israeli analysts believe are coerced. A new video post shows a Hamas spokesman saying that the group is willing to release up to 70 hostages, apparently women, children, and the elderly, in exchange for a five-day ceasefire and the release of women and minors serving time in Israeli jails. Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the Citizens' Coalition for Change, CCC, has lost a shocking 18 new parliamentary seats after an imposter announced in a parliament that they had left the party, resulting in the loss of their seats. This news comes a month after 15 other MPs were deprived of their seats in the same way, bringing the total to 33 parliamentarians removed from their mandate and as the CCC accuses the ruling parties and PF of carrying out a vast campaign of intimidation of his supporters. It's absurd and lamentable. I am the leader of the opposition in the assembly. All communication from my party must go through me," reacted Amos Chibayer to the place shortly after the president of parliament confirmed his recall as well as that of 12 other deputies. Five senators were also removed from their seats. At the beginning of October, a certain Singezo Tushabangu presenting himself as the acting general secretary in the CCC sent a letter to parliament claiming that 15 elected deputies had left the party. The head of the CCC, Nelson Chamisa, then asked that this error-ridden letter not be taken into account, explaining that the author was not a member of the opposition party and that no elected official had left the ranks. Parliament nevertheless declared these positions vacant. The same scenario repeated itself this week. This city Shibangu is not a member of the CCC and has no authority to recall members of the party. Amos Chibaya further protested. These recalls paved way for by-elections scheduled for December 9th to fill the vacancies created by the recall of the first group. They could offer on a platter to two-thirds majority in parliament necessary to amend the constitution to the ruling partisan PF victorious in disputed elections in August. Civil society NGOs fear that this situation could lead to violence. ZANU-PF in power since independence in 1980 is accused of leading a vast campaign of intimidation of the CCC. Last weekend, a party activist who was campaigning for the by-election was kidnapped and found dead. At the end of October and the beginning of November, the CCC announced that one of its deputies and former deputy had been kidnapped tortured, then found naked and injured for the first, and his head shaved for the second.